Ron's Big Mission by Rose Blue and Corinne Naden, illustrated by Don Tate. Beautiful pictures. You're up early this morning, Ron. What's the rush? Asked Mrs. McNair. Come and have your breakfast. I made some oatmeal. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Just be home by lunchtime, okay? Ron was nine years old. That morning, he left his house with a plan. He'd been thinking about it for a long time. It was a beautiful South Carolina day, and Ron looked up at the blue, blue sky. Someday, he thought, he would be up there flying a plane. He wanted to be a pilot when he grew up, but today, Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. There you are, just in time for a donut. Morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's some place I've got to be. And Ron kept walking. Ron is really on a mission. He's staying focused on what he has to do. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting baskets. All right, you made it, called Carl. Hi, Carl, said Ron. I wish I could stay, but I've got something important to do. More important than basketball on summer vacation, said Carl. Are you kidding? Ron laughed. He loved to play basketball, but not today. Today was too important. Ron kept on walking. When Ron got to the Lake City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast and he was nervous too. He took a deep breath lifted his head high and went inside. Mrs. Scott was busy getting ready for all the people who would be using the library today. As the head librarian, she had to make sure that everything was neat and orderly. Mrs. Scott looked up to welcome her first visitor of the day. She smiled as Ron walked in. He was her best customer. Ron gave a little wave to Mrs. Scott and went right to the shelves. It took Ron a while to find some books. He always looked for books that showed children who looked like him. But that was hard. There were not many books about black kids on the shelves. At last, Ron found some books on airplanes. He took the books and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt, like a, li felt a little sweaty, but he knew what he had to do. Mrs. Fielding, a white lady, who was often in the library, stopped him. You can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. No thanks, Mrs. Fielding, Ron said. I'm going to do it all by myself. But Ron, she started to say. Hmm. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk didn't look at him. 
Didn't she hear me? Ron wondered. Ron knew what he had to do. He jumped up on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said. At first, the desk clerk and Mrs. Scott just looked at each other. You know you can't check out books, Ron, said Mrs. Scott. You can read them here. That's the rule. Only white people can check out books from the library. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk politely, but he would not budge. I always read them here. Today, I want to check them out, said Ron. Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk did not know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. Finally, the desk clerk called the Lake City Police. That rule is unfair. Two policemen came right over. Let someone check out the books for you, son, said one of the policemen. You know the rules. But John J Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Now, Mrs. Scott called Ron's mother. Mrs. McNair came to the library very quickly. I know how you feel, baby, she said, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. The rules are unfair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything. Not the desk clerk, not Mrs. Scott, not the policeman, not even Ron's mother. Mrs. Scott looked, up, looked at Ron. She thought about all the times that Ron came into the library and all the times he sat at the tables for hours looking over so many books. He was her best customer and she knew what she had to do. Ron is pretty brave. Mrs. Scott walked back into her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. Hi, Chantrell. Thank you for joining the last story time. Hey, Noah. Mrs. Scott returned and handed Ron a library card. His library card. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and smiled. As he jumped to the floor, he thought he saw her smile, too. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said, handing the card to the desk clerk. The desk clerk took his library card and stamped the cards in the back of the book. These are due back in two weeks, she said. Boy, look at Ron's smile. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. He tucked the books under his arm and took his mother's hand. Together, they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his room. The end. The boy who was Ron McNair grew into a man who flew planes just like he dreamed he would do. He became an astronaut. Today, everyone in Lake City remembers him. They remember him every time they walk into the library. The red brick building on 234 Main Street is a special place. The walls in the children's room were painted with pictures that show children reading books under a huge oak tree. A space shuttle flies through the sky. Inside the library, everyone can get a card and check out books. 
Ron, young Ron McNair had a dream. On that day in 1959, he made it start to come true. Because of him, many young people have a chance to dream. You can only be a winner if you're willing to walk over the edge, astronaut McNair once told a group of children. Your eagle, spread your wings and fly to the sky. Many years ago in Lake City, South Carolina, young Ron McNair became a hero. Years later, in 1986, astronaut Ron McNair was once again a hero. He lost his life with the space shuttle Challenger, exploded in January 28th with the loss of the entire crew. The Lake City Public Library is dedicated to astronaut McNair. And this is a picture of Ron McNair.